Hey everybody, we're going to be looking at how to use Logic's drummer track with third party drummers today. This is something that I was always thinking, I wonder if I could just import drums into this particular instrument or how I could do it in different ways. And it was actually really easy to figure out using the environment. It involves one drag of one cable and all of a sudden we can use all of the power of the auto drummer using third-party drums. In today's example, I specifically wanted to use the Fab Four instrument from East West because it's a, a set of drum kits that are not a, the exact ones that the Beatles used, but they're based off of the sounds that they had. They're using era accurate drum kits. They sound amazing, and I wanted to be able to use those inside Logic with the drummer track and all of the auto drummer features. So the matrix where you get to choose how complex the sound is, all the patterns that are there, all of that I wanted to use with this other drum kit and it turned out so easy. So let's dive right into the software. I wanna show you how to do it. Uh, we're gonna look at some of the examples of it and I think that you're gonna be just pleasantly surprised at how easy it is. Now. As with everything in Logic, there's probably a thousand ways to do everything. If you know of a different way to achieve this same thing really easily, drop it in the comments below. I'd love to hear some of your feedback and just see what other people are doing to take advantage of this automatic drum function inside the drummer track. So that's the drummer track. We're going to take this and send the data away to another instrument. So let's go ahead and add the Fab Four from East West. This is a great instrument. I have the Composer Cloud with them, so I, I get to have access to a ton of their instruments. And the Fab Four is one of them. It's a basically set up to emulate or sound like the instruments from the Beatles. And I think they've done a really great job with it. I mean, they're really detailed instruments. They sound amazing. And you can see from the names of them which songs they're trying to go towards without actually saying the full name of the song. Now, they are limited kits. They're not huge kits because they're mimicking real kits and real sets of instruments. But they do have a wide variety here, and they're very interesting. And I've had a great time using these kits specifically when I'm going for more of a retro sound or even a modern sound. I mean, these kits just sound great overall. Uh, so once we decide which one we want to do, that's when we have to open up our environment. Once we have the environment open, then all we do is find the track that has the drummer on it. There's a little arrow in the top right hand corner. We're gonna drag it to the instrument that has the play engine with the Fab Four instrument loaded up. That's all you have to do in order to make the drummer control. Now you'll see when I move the drummer tracks fader, it moves the other fader because it's sending out fader data as well. But we just turn down the drummer track and then turn up the second instrument track. Now what we're hearing is the actual drummer from the, the Fab Four kits instead of the drummer track inside uh, Logic itself. Means we can come down here and change all of our parameters and it's gonna update real time. Switch over to the toms, make it simple and soft or we can make it loud and complex. We can change the swing or how many fills are added. We can change the, the overall push or pull of it, the ghost notes. And if we're using a hi-hat pattern, we can change the ratio to close and open that's happening as well.
cool. The next thing we're going to look at here is how to change between the different drummers and the patterns because there is something to be said for that process. What we have to do is actually tell the drummer track not to reset itself every time that we're changing one of those things. Because it will. If we change to a different drummer, it'll just uh, erase the connection between the two tracks. However, we can come in here and tell it how to actually do that. So in the settings right next to where the patterns are, you can say to keep the drummer and to keep the settings, and you have to do both in order to prevent it from resetting every time you want to do that. So you just have to reset it. When you're doing just the patterns inside the same drummer, it doesn't matter. That doesn't reset anything. But here's where we'll actually come down and make that change. So we have to do, well, we're going to end up doing both, but let me show you what happens if you're just doing one of them. And we come over to make a change. It will say to you, do you want to do this? I'm going to say cancel for now. But if we weren't to do that, here's what would happen. It would erase that connection inside there and we just have to come into the environment and reconnect them. So that's pretty simple to fix, even if you were to forget and not do it. Just have to reassign that one element. But we can come through once you have both of those on there and try out all the different styles. You can even do some of the EDM and electronic music type styles. Kind of fun to be able to make some of those changes. Another thing that this allows us to use because we're doing the play engine is that we have effects built into there and it has an entire SSL set of effects which sound great so I can process the drums and things inside the actual plugin instead of relying on some of Logic's plugins. I have a different color, a different tool set, and not only do things like the master channel but I get uh, EQ compression uh, and some other special effects and things like that that are just built right into that instrument. So I can process those separately than I would with all the rest. One other thing to think about, and that is if you're using one of these kits or any kit that has a different set of instruments than say the drummer is expecting, we can come in and use a scripter and load up inside the scripter one of the drum remapping effects. And that allows us to take all of the expected kits and assign them to different MIDI notes. That means we can then say I want you know the kick or this particular crash that you have. I'm going to put it on a note that corresponds more with the, the Fab Four or some other third party thing. And that makes it really useful for remapping. It's super easy. It's built into Logic like it's designed for this. Okay, hope you enjoyed this look at using this instrument or this whole style of instruments inside Logic. The last thing I'll say is once you have this all set up, say you want to get rid of the drummer track, all you need to do is drag that region down onto the actual track with the instrument you want to use and it will continue to work. And then it turns it into MIDI, true MIDI data, not into the drummer region, which is still MIDI, but it's packaged different way. And then you can continue to program it, edit it, change it around however you like. So you're not stuck using this the whole way. I just really like being able to go back and use all of the, the really cool automatic tools from the drummer instead of necessarily having to make it or commit to MIDI every single time. Okay, that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed this look at the way we can use drummer with third-party drummers. Hope you're having a safe time in quarantine wherever you are. 
and we're going to do another video coming up soon.